ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. And the New Zealand Kiwis are the inaugural Pacific Championship winners. They have carved up the kangaroos of Australia by 30 points to nil. The kangaroos, they don't lose too often. So when they went scoreless in the final of the Pacific Champs while shipping 30 to the Kiwis, yeah, that, that stung. Redemption is calling this Sunday afternoon, and we ask whether Meninga, Moses and co are taking the call. We're also looking at the Matildas' new era featuring old coach Tom Samani as the curve-free Aussies take on two big Euro nations. In soundbites, there's enormous basketball names blowing up, a UFC star throwing down, and the sweetest bit of cricket content you will hear in 2024. I'm Patrick Stack. This is ABC Sport Daily. If there is a more handsome NRL reporter than Zach Bailey, I would love to meet them. He's in New Zealand for the huge clash between Australia and the Kiwis this Sunday. Zach, how are you? Kia ora from Aotearoa, uh, Stacky, which is also known as Christchurch. You are bringing the vibes. Sometimes international footy can feel a bit vibe-free, a bit meh, but the context of last year's Pacific Championships final defeat via the Kiwis for the Kangaroos has me interested. Has there been a tangible intensity around this group this week? Yeah, well, I was there in Hamilton last year when the Kangaroos went in as heavy favourites. Everybody expected them to turn up and just get the job done easily. And as you mentioned, they'll thrash 30 nil. Pass over the top to a flying Asako, and he dives over to score in the corner. Mal Meninga was speaking at a conference this morning. Uh, he was asked the worst loss of his coaching career, and he said, I don't have to look back too far. It was that loss in Hamilton, and he said... I'm over-talking about it. I wish I could forget it. You don't always hear a lot out of Mal Meninga. He's a man of very few words. He lets his assistants kind of run the show. But he was very vocal at training yesterday. They're definitely out to avenge that loss. They may not say it too much publicly, but the Kangaroos definitely want to prove that they are definitely the number one test rugby league nation in the world. When you think about the big name halves that are not there for the Kangas and this kind of newish pairing of Dearden and Moses, how big is this test for those two? Yeah, well, you're right. It's a bit of a changing of the guard in a sense. Nathan Cleary is obviously out because he's requiring shoulder surgery. They've moved on from Daly Cherry Evans, who's always been 2IC there. Ben Hunt has been included as 18th man. But this is really Mitch Moses and Tom Dearden's time to shine. They were considered clunky in game one against Tonga. I sat down with Mitch Moses for a pretty in-depth chat uh, that'll go to air on Nine News. And he basically said he never thought this opportunity would come. Uh, he's basically just renting this jersey off Nathan Cleary. But it is a boyhood dream of his, and he wants to dominate as long as he is in that number seven jersey. I expect a far better performance out of Tom Deard and Mitch Moses, given they've got another week in camp under their belt together, and connecting with the likes of Dylan Edwards and Harry Grant through the middle. I, I think they will be a lot better, especially Tom Deard. And this is his time to shine again with Cam Munster out through injury as well. Deard now to dummy half. Goes himself into some oh, space and he stepped through Daniel Tupo like he didn't exist. Brilliant footwork by Tom Dearden. What a player he is. From a Kiwi perspective, they have been beset by injuries and I'm fascinated by what Sean Johnson might conjure in this kind of bonus chapter of his storied career, Zach. Yeah, it's a, it is a fascinating story. A, a retirement that's lasted less than two months. He said that he didn't want to go on for another year playing NRL and get through another pre-season and the weekly training. But he has answered this SOS from his country and it means more to him now than ever. I said to him the other day, is your body fine? Are your shoulders ready for the barrage of players that the Kangaroos are going to send you away? He said, Zach, my shoulders have never been ready for any player running my way. But he is going to get out there and give it his best. Interestingly, I spoke to Stacey Jones the Kiwis coach this morning and and he brought Kieran Foran into camp who's unavailable through injury and he said what he's been able to do to mentor Sean Johnson and Charles Nickel Cookster who is obviously you know really inexperienced as a 5'8 he normally plays fullback for the Warriors has been huge I just hope that Sean Johnson provides us a couple more highlights in his final couple of games for the Kiwis because he's just been so so good to watch over the years and he is a legend of rugby league in New Zealand. It's a moment for heroes Can 
give us a bit of a vibe check on rugby league in New Zealand right now? I, I don't know that we appreciate on this side of the ditch how much it's fizzing over there right now. Yeah, that's fair. It's a long season when you, you consider, you know, the NRL season kicked off in Vegas. There's a pre-season cup before that, 27 rounds of footy in the finals. Then players and fans have got to be really focused on the Pacific Championships. It means a lot to people involved, obviously, in both teams. Uh, and it means a lot to people in Christchurch. The game was sold out last Tuesday. So that shows how much interest there is here. The, there was a fan day on Tuesday over here, on Wednesday rather, when we arrived, and it was packed. Like, the players had to be pulled away. <laughs> Fans are trying to get on the buses for both the Kiwis, Jillaroos, <laughs> Kangaroos players. They are absolutely just fizzing is probably the right word. Frothing, fizzing. They're stoked to have these players in town. And speaking of the junior league guys here, they said there's been already a 25% increase in growth in junior footy here on the back of the Warriors' success and sold-out games this year. So although I might not be getting the attention back in Oz, the Kiwis are lapping up every second of having these stars in town. Just one on the ladies. Ali Brigginshaw's back for the Jillaroos. Will they be pretty big favourites against the Kiwis? Yeah, they certainly will be. Uh, a huge result, 84-0 last week uh, against PNG at Suncorp Stadium. Ali Brigginshaw missed that match after undergoing finger surgery. She is definitely back this week. Uh, she brings so much experience to this Jillaroos side. She's the stalwart. She's the wise mum of the group. And a great chase by Brigginshaw. She'll retrieve it. And she's over for the Jillaroos. There's a real new energy, though, to this team. Brad Donald has made some tough decisions, leaving out Dallium medalist Olivia Koenig in the lead-up to this Pacific Championship Series. They lost last year's final as well, so like the men, the Australian women will be out to avenge that loss. But they go into this match as heavy favourites against the Kiwi Ferns. But, yeah, two cracking test matches coming up in Christchurch this weekend. Every moment's going to be live and free on the ABC Listen app. Zach Bailey, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me, Stucky. Over the next five and a bit days, the Matildas will play the 25th ranked Switzerland on Saturday, then Germany four days later. It's going to be a fascinating window into the national team right now. Neve Owen's here to discuss it. She's something of a velvet sledgehammer. She's lovely, but there's substance <laughs> there. If you're paying attention, there's some punch. G'day, Neve. Hello, Stacky. That's a beautiful description. I love that. <laughs> Interim <laughs> manager Tom Samani, Neve. He is pulling the reins as we continue to wait for a new Matildas coach. What should we be looking for in this window under new coach Tom Samani? You should be looking for Tommy to have his traditional cup of tea on the sidelines while the girls warm up pre-game. I first met Tommy in 2019 at the World Cup in France and he was coaching the New Zealand team at that stage. And I loved, you know, you know that anxiety and the tension and the buzz around coaches just pre-game you know you try and have a yarn with them and there's just not time they're under pressure and they're feeling it all and yet you could go and sit in the dugout with Tommy he'd have a cup of tea in one hand he might have a crossword in the other and he'd have a little yarn with you about how this was going to play out and that I think is a bit of an insight into the kind of bloke he is he is a beautiful human and he feels like a really great fit for the side right now I think heading into this new cycle if someone gave me a choice right now to say well would you want a good performance or do you want a result right at this moment in time I would say we want a result and this team is fairly desperate to get back on a winning track again and at a time where vibes in camp are at a bit of an all-time low chatting with Tommy this week ahead of the game against Switzerland he said the players feel a bit beaten up a bit hurt by what happened at the Olympics and one of the things he's targeting one of the things he's looking for Stacky in answer to your question is trying to get that confidence back into the team really trying to um, build that up mentally having the squad working together cohesively again and also really enjoying their football and enjoying that time together in Matilda's camp. For us it's about playing with confidence playing with freedom and I think Tommy's going to allow us to do that um, he's come in he's implemented what he thinks this team is world class at what our strong attributes are so yeah I'm really looking forward to these two upcoming games. How dangerous is that fragile confidence when they're going to come up against a team like Germany who's I think top three in the world if not top five at least. 
Yeah, a very, very good squad. And we know that traditionally the Tillies haven't had a whole heap of success against teams in the top 10 in the world. I'm grateful that that is the second game of this little window. The girls have been together for a few days in camp. Now they play Switzerland next. Switzerland are 25-ish in the world and on a bit of a push of their own. They've got Pia Sundhager in charge, who is an extremely experienced coach in her own right. Didn't have a lot of success with Brazil at the last World Cup, but has made it to a World Cup final with the US, has a couple of gold medals in a bag from her time coaching the US women's national team. And they're building towards hosting the Euros in Switzerland in 2025. So they're on that growth trajectory where they're really putting resources into the women's game. So they will be no easy beats, but I think a nice way to start for Tommy Samani, but also for the team as they look to rebuild after that Olympic Games experience and try to get back to playing the kind of football that we know they're capable of. But also Tommy has mentioned this week that he's going to have a real focus on defensive pragmatism is what he called it. A defensive pragmatism about how we play, ensuring that those goals that the Matildas concede and any Tillies fans listening will know that it happens at times and you put your head in your hands and you just think that was dumb. How on earth did we concede that goal? A fumble and the equaliser for Canada. Mackenzie Arnold is quick to apologise because Nichelle Prince made her pay for the little bobble. So he's going to have a real focus on game management, still playing the beautiful football going forward that we know this side is capable of, but squashing out those lapses in concentration, those silly goals that ultimately often end to Matilda's losing games. Hey, no Sam Kerr in this window. She hasn't played for Chelsea since her ACL either. It's been 10 months. Why don't we have a return date yet? Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? And I think one of the reasons why we don't have a return date yet is that there have been a few issues in her recovery. A few different things have happened that have set her back from where she would like to be. What we hear now is that she's getting herself back into a really good position. We know the Australian physio visited her at Chelsea last week. So that interaction between club and country is really important and that's been a little bit fractured in recent times. So with Tommy Samani in charge in an interim capacity and him picking up the phone, talking to Sam, talking to the coach at Chelsea, having those conversations, that's new from what we've had more recently and that is really really positive it's really important for sam to take as long as it takes to make sure she comes back fully without cutting any corners and that's a process that she's taken so we don't think we'll see sammy in camp with the players this week we do think in terms of her recovery she's in a much better place which is really great news and i think with a player of her age but also her importance not rushing that return is really big You know, she's actually had a tough couple of years injury-wise and we want to see her playing at the top of her game, at the top of the world game, for a number of years to come. And so hopefully over the next couple of months, if that recovery stays on track, we will, Stacky, we will have a date soon. Fascinated to see what happens across two big games for the Tillies. Nevo, and thanks so much for your time. No worries, Stacky. Soundbites, have you had a rough week? You're not alone. Cheryl Reeve is the coach of Minnesota who lost the WNBA title decider to the Sandy Brondello coach, New York Liberty. And Reeve says the refs robbed them of a championship. And all the headlines uh, will be Reeve cries foul. Uh, Bring it on, right? Bring it on because this shit was stolen from us. That's pointed. In the NBL, it was Justin Tatum, father of Celtic star Jason and coach of Illawarra, who argued he was unfairly allocated a technical foul. That is grim. They're saying if they're consistent now, any coach in question to call and explain should get a T foul, right? That 100 percent but it's only gonna be me. It's only me. I'm intimidated, I guess my voice too deep, I'm too tall, my skin color is different, whatever it is, it's me. You know, because I, I hear the same coaches say similar to the same things or complain about the same stuff and their lead way, their leash is a little bit longer. In the UFC, Rob Whitaker is getting ready to take on a storied Chechen opponent and was asked about what he associates with that region. I live at the ass end of the world, you know, in Australia. And honestly, I'm a bit of a, a, bit of a wombat. I don't really expand my horizons too much. From wombats to Kiwis, and the NZ team won the T20 Women's World Cup. How did they celebrate? By serenading their departing captain, Sophie Devine, of course. (laughs) 
Isn't that a palate cleanse? Sing us out, ladies. Let's keep that rolling. Patrick Stack. This is ABC Sport Daily, produced by Jason Ford. Thanks to the BBC, Paramount Plus, Channel 7 and the ICC for the extra audio used in this episode. Discover more great ABC podcasts, live radio and exclusives on the ABC Listen app.